Today on Toy Shiz, the final blight of the puzzle. Let's talk toys. Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look. And today we are totally checking out the brand new Target exclusive DC Multiverse Blight action figure from the McFarlane Toys' DC Multiverse line. This is actually the final figure in the year-long collect-to-build Batman Beyond Futures End series. So, you finally have all the pieces to make a Joker bot. Throughout this 2021 year, there were four figures, of course, and basically you would build out a really nice looking Batman Beyond collection. So it's nice to have only four figures, and here's the barcode as well. Now, just a heads up, I did get mine from Target. They were able to be like, okay, it's on the shelf. We'll sell it to you. I'll bite a little bit of a rigmarole, but these are due out on the 15th now of December. I had heard the first, it now looks to be the 15th of December. So keep in mind, even though if you see them on shelves, they might street date you, which is unfortunate because I'm a firm believer if they have it on store shelves, if it's out, they didn't pull it from the back, they definitely should be able to sell it. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys' DC Multiverse Target exclusive Blight from the Batman Beyond Future's End Joker Bot Collect a Build Wave. So before we dive into Blight, let's go ahead and finally assemble the Joker Bot. Now he does come with these two wings for the final pieces. They're not very good at all and to that's being quite honest with you it's actually a real disappointment where i kind of prefer the joker bot minus these big clumsy wings also they feel incredibly brittle and this part right here at the top you want to be careful that you don't all of a sudden just move the wings right up because that will snap they do articulate we'll say but when you have this fairly good looking joker bot it's a nice looking figure overall but there's just not enough there. But we'll go ahead and we'll put the wings in just like this. And, ah, oh man. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do because these are impossible to get in. I'm going to heat these up and I will be right back. And as I was saying, I've had a great time putting together this Joker bot for the entirety of this 2021 year. It's fun to kind of go back and go like, okay, I need the figure. And it's only one every two or three months. It's cool. I enjoyed it. It's the fun of putting the figure together. However, the final end result of putting everything together is just kind of like, eh, it, it's not befitting of, let's say, a McFarlane collect-a-build figure or a build-a-figure in general. You have this gorgeous figure, which is sculpted to the nines. There are so many details to this figure, and there is no paint on this guy. It's actually quite disappointing. The wings are so brittle and so just obtrusive that it's more like I would just prefer not to have them. Of course, it's straight from the design. They nailed the design, but you can see the green wires right here. That's it for the paint on the back side of the figure. On the front, you have the green wires on the underside. You have these right here. The gun, I believe, is painted or at least brushed. It may be overly silver plastic but there is some paint to it the head is nicely detailed again with some mcfarland toys that i noticed for 2021 overly detailed heads very basic unpainted bodies this is really quite a bummer of a figure unfortunately and one that i would never really say is a good one for a batman beyond villain because it comes from one of the worst storylines. Future's End was not good. It looks cool. It stands good. It articulates well. Overall, it's a really creepy, cool-looking figure. But overall, it just leaves you wanting more. It's just one of those odd-end figures where aesthetically, yeah, it looks good. The wings go very easy on the wings. Grab the ball right there and switch it because these things, you'll have to heat them up, one, to get them in, and two, they don't really move all that great. They're very much a hindrance to the figure, and as the final piece, it's just kind of like, okay. I kind of like swapping the, the wings on the underside. I think that actually looks kind of cool. It looks creepy. Now, again, don't get me wrong in saying, like, I'm, I'm just, I hate this figure. I can't stand it. It's just one. Not exactly a Batman Beyond villain to me. Two, very humdrum, the paint and everything else. And three, it ends up being kind of like a brittle mess of a figure. 
and one that I just really don't recommend putting together at the end now having all of the pieces. While this one didn't work, I would like to see, for 2022 at least, do another wave just like this, four figures, the entire wave, and put together another figure. Try it again. If at first you don't succeed, see what happens the second time around and see if you can fix the problems that this one inherently had. But a plus I will definitely give to this figure though is I like the height on him. He's bigger, he's massive, he's a bigger villain, much like Blight here. Now I will tell you all day, I'm a big fan of Derek Powers as Blight in the more business suit attire. I was gonna say, this one's too comic book. I don't know if I'm gonna like this. Well, this one I was pleasantly surprised. He comes with a really cool Blight radiation infusing hand. He's got the skeleton and it, it looks really cool. It looks like it stepped right out of that scene where in Batman Beyond he goes, Blight will do, you know? And Blight himself has a lot of paint, a lot going on, a lot of sculpted detail. And overall, just into kind of contrast it against the Joker bot, this one just seems like more of a well thought out figure. I am very happy. I mean, all the detail, all the greens, the purple plastic mixed with the black, mixed with the green accents, the little bubbles all over them are all painted. It looks cool. And it looks like he stepped right out of the comic book. Again, not being a huge fan of this look, this is a good looking figure. And he is now officially totally Dr. Phosphorus, right? <laughs> with the containment suit. But this figure boasts all the articulation that you could want in a McFarlane figure. And it does it well. Nothing hinders. The armor doesn't get in the way. He's got some double jointed elbows to him. The wrists will spin, of course, and they will rock. He will have a pretty good waist articulation. It goes back, forward. He will kick out. He's got double jointed knees and they work well. He's got ankle rocker and he also has toe articulation. Now in the head, this is what's interesting right here. I thought I broke it, right, when I took it off. The head will actually come off. You can see his little spinal column right there. The head is, one, very Ghost Rider-ish, but two, very evocative of the comic. It just looks great, and I love that when you kind of put a light behind it, it glows fantastic. So, essentially, you can turn the dome and you turn the head. The powers fit on perfectly, again, evoking that scene when he first lights up and he's gonna throw it at Batman Beyond. So I definitely like what they did here and I want more, I mean, more powers would have been so cool for this guy because he stands great, he photographs well, he looks menacing. That is a really cool look for Blight. One that, you know, again, when you see the comic book, I'm like, eh, but when you have him in plastic form, I was like, oh, I'm actually really enjoying this. It gives a lot more to just a guy in a business suit. And I'll admit, it really does kind of amp it up a little bit. I definitely really like the look of this figure. Now, having it in hand and displaying it with my other Batman Beyond figures. And I think he scales nicely with Terry McGinnis as well. Overall, the year for Batman Beyond figures, one, the fact that they did Batman Beyond is awesome. I would have totally preferred animated style, but it's something different, and I always welcome that. When you can give me something different and I'm still having a good time and it's a property I know, that's what's fun. With Shriek, they absolutely nailed it, both with the mass and unmass. I can't say enough nice things about that. Overall, when you look at the villain's selection, more so with the exception of Shriek, because I really feel like you could go either way, comic book or otherwise. Odd choices, but one that'd be an odd choice if you're purely an animated series fan like me. In the case of Ink, which I would have loved to have had more of an Ink figure with all the Clayface-like appendages and pop-off sharp knives and everything else that she can do, we were given quite the lackluster repaint. While it's cool looking, that's the base minimum and really when you look at it uh this is us <laughs> buying her in terms of the more featureless batman beyond figure of the wave you could say that it's robert vance from the animated series being that he doesn't have the nose doesn't have the mouth it doesn't have the facial features of someone in the actual suit so i kind of like it in that sense however i would have loved to have seen like the green showing through if they would have gone that route with an extra head something to that degree Blight, Terry, overall, 
very happy with how they look all kind of put together. However, the Joker bot just does not do it for me. Batgirl, Batwoman Beyond, she's okay. It's just an okay figure, to be honest. It's basically Terry in the bat suit. I think it would have been cooler if you maybe you had something unmasked, something maybe in the blue suited version, something to that degree. And unfortunately, I don't have the more spellbound episode where he gets all gashed up and the suit gets torn. I haven't found that version yet, but that is one that I would like to add to my collection. So overall, that's going to wrap it up for my look at the 2021 JokerBot Build-A-Figure Collect-A-Build Wave. That was a Target exclusive looking at Blight, the Joker Bot, Batman Beyond, Shriek, and Batwoman Beyond. It's a nice set of figures. There are a lot of hiccups. There is a lot of great things as well. Overall, the collect-to-build figure is disappointing to me. I absolutely love this Blight figure. I like the more featured Batman Beyond face that they did with the wings and the jet boots. The more featureless one, unless you want to call it Robert Vance, is kind of obsolete to me in terms of what I think about with Batman Beyond, but that's just my own thoughts and feelings. Batwoman Beyond, it's kind of fun to have a figure of her, although I wish it would have gone just a little bit of different route. And Shriek, Night Perfection, absolutely love that figure. But I am curious to know what you guys think about this line. Did you collect any of the figures? Are you going to put together the Joker Bot? Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Joker Bot, collect a build wave. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, when it comes to these collect to build waves, I like keeping it at four figures to build it. And I did like, overall, the entire year to build the figure. Even though the figure turns out at the end to be a little bit of a, eh, you know, either way kind of thing. Let's do it again and see what you can do for 2022. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.